As many organizations shift from in-person office work to virtual work from home environments on a more permanent basis, there is a need to consider the impact on compensation. Employers may want to consider what expenses remote workers should cover and what is reimbursable by the company. It's also important to distinguish between what is considered an incentive and what is an accommodation. So by that I mean what you need to cover versus what you can cover to contribute to an employer's overall job satisfaction. If you do decide to shift to virtual work more permanently, you will save, of course, on real estate and equipment fees. So it is recommended that you consider redirecting some of those savings into your employees to retain top talent that, as we know, can be so hard to find and secure. Historically, the norm has been for companies to provide corporately managed IT equipment. Employers may want to consider providing a cell phone and technology allowance for employees. So for example, you could provide $50 a month for cell phone bills and an example of $700 every three years to contribute towards the purchase of a laptop or a computer. The cell phone and the laptop would then be employee property, but you are contributing towards that one-time purchase. The advantage to the employer is that then you don't have to manage the phones. It's not company property. There isn't any company liability because it's actually a personal phone. And employees as well can choose whatever models they want and have that extra element of choice and freedom there. There isn't really a need anymore to keep personal phones separate from company phones. Employers should work with HR to customize the parameters of this agreement to consider things like data storage and confidential information that is unique to the organization. Companies who reduce their office footprint may want to provide employees with an allowance to purchase their own furniture for a home office. An example could be a one-time taxable allowance of let's say $1,000 to help offset the cost of a desk, a chair, or a file cabinet. It's a one-time purchase and you don't want to lose an employee just because they don't feel set up to work from home. It's important to also consider the ergonomics of working from home and shifting to a virtual workstation. Improper posture and a poor workstation setup can cause physical stress, strain, headaches, joint pain, back pain, and can also flare up old injuries. Absenteeism as a result of these injuries would be far more costly than the one-time cost of an ergonomic desk and chair. Employers may also want to consider incentives, so using again those savings from office expenses to retain your top talent. So things to look at are, are things like a wellness credit that will allow you to invest in the physical and mental health of employees. Working from home may cause employees to be more sedentary, which can lead to adverse health and affect productivity at work as well. A wellness credit towards a gym, yoga studio, or virtual workouts may help to increase employee health. You can consider recognizing employees through perks like uh, grocery delivery, takeout meal service, or household cleaning to help ease household responsibility. Considering training and development is also important. The investment in personal and professional development should continue for virtual employees. You can look at resources such as LinkedIn Learning or Masterclass and keep employees accountable for their professional development. Considering team building and social support for employees, especially because they are often used to daily social interaction with colleagues and they may find the switch to working from home a little bit lonely or isolating. You can use an internal communication system to allow employees to chat or message to each other and also planning regular team building activities can bring people together and break the ice.